You're watching the Hello Chambers on TVC News. I am TJ Su Adewi. And later on the program. Section 14 to be the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people. So if the government fails in this, you have failed in everything. The Senate has urged the executive arm of government to expedite action on President Buhari's Ways and Means request, which stirred up controversy at their last plenary session. The President of the Senate has now asked the executive arm of government to cooperate with its ad hoc committee as it is yet to get an official response from the Minister of Finance and the CBN Governor. The House of Representatives has stepped down a bill seeking to amend the NYSC Act to make the one-year National Youth Service voluntary. The bill seeks to provide a cure for what its sponsors call the unrealistic allowances given to youth core members as remuneration in line with prevailing economic realities. But the clause to make the scheme voluntary divided the legislators. It is our belief that this activity should no longer be compulsory. And that is why there's an amendment we are proposing here to remove the word shall from section 2 subsection 1 of the principal act and bring in May, making it um, optional for people to attend. What was the reason for establishing the NYC? What was, why is it be, being called National Youth Service Corp? And who is a youth? Actually, I think the, 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 the drafters of that law and our constitution are looking for those elements that bind us together. And when you are going to do that, at what age? What the mover of the bill is saying that the benefit or the importance of the scheme is no longer tenable, I disagree totally because if you are in a particular area, you have not gone to test the other side. You will not know the character and the experience of the other side. The House of Representatives has called on the nation's security chiefs to deploy more personnel to Edo Central Senatorial District to stem the rising wave of abductions. A motion from Edo member Sergius Ogun seeks an end to daily abductions of citizens in the interest of peace and development. As is convinced that the setting up of a police mobile force base and a Nigerian army barracks slash forward operating base, FOB, within Edo Central Senatorial District will go a long way in weeding off perpetrators of crimes and criminality from Ace and Land and Edo State in general. Well, like somebody has said in the past, is a, a stick a carrot approach. As much as we believe that, I also believe that we don't have enough security men. And people have also said, it's not just about security. If the people are hungry, or the people are not educated, they are likely to take to, to vices that are, will be inimical to ideas of the states. You know, so I believe if we used to flourish in this country, we didn't have this, this, we didn't get to this level of insecurity. So I believe if we do the right things, you know, most of these things will go. I mean, now we just came out from Christmas and New Year. How much was a bag of rice? A civil servant, they say minimum wage is thirty thousand naira. Yes, maybe granted nobody earns thirty thousand naira. You know, if even if a civil servant earns a hundred and fifty thousand naira and you buy a bag of rice for a family of 10, how many weeks will that go? And from that 150,000 naira that the man earns, let's assume the woman earns 150,000 naira, that's 300,000 naira. 
you have to pay children's school fees, you have to pay rent, you have to pay transport to work, then you have to field, and then your health care is in there. That money is not even, can barely even take that particular individual home. That's for those that have jobs. Those that do not have are more than those that have. So for every household, every man that is working in a household is feeding extended family members. So when you are talking about corruption, you have to read it down. So there are people that you have families, you don't have anybody working. So what are they exposed to? So those are social issues that I believe we're going to take care of. But we haven't said that. We don't even have enough security men too. Yes, uh, I think it was last week, the, the, the week before last really, people were kidnapped in the train station in the Gweben, as in my senatorial. And, and these people were just going to travel to death and they went to the train station. And they were kidnapped right at the train station, vicinity of the train station. They should have CCTV and security men there. And then they went away with them. While we were grappling with that, a president of the customary court was kidnapped. Then about the same day or a couple of days after, a former House of Assembly member, when I say former, it was a House of Assembly member of 2015 to 2019, was kidnapped on his way, on the same route, Sibuebeng Guneki going to Benin to take his flight. You know? Well, thank God, I want to also appreciate the security men. These ones have been rescued or released, you know? And then some of the people kidnapped also have also been rescued. But you still have some people with them, you know? So if you have enough security men there, they will be proactive from when they took those people. They didn't put them in a plane to fly out to anywhere. They went through the bushes. And people knew the route they were going through. But if you had enough security, they would have stopped them almost immediately. You know? It took over a week. I think it was even on the eve of the week. I think it was a week after the incident that 12 people were rescued. Actually from a village. They said they were in the forest. They were tracked to that place and they were crossing the road by midnight. That's when they were apprehended because the, the army, the police led ambush. So if we have enough boots on ground, some of these things will not happen. Even the so-called boots we are asking, the policemen, the army, civil defense, and other, other security agents, we are asking for more, but they should also be properly remunerated. Otherwise, they can also be the problem because they can connive with the criminals and then they will rape the state. You know? So these are issues we believe the government should look into. Section 14, 2B, the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people. So if the government fails in this, you have failed in everything. Like I said, we don't have enough boots on ground. If you have, we have security, enough security men in, in a given area, and something happens, well, like the train station, is a, is a government facility where they were taken. That's what I'm saying. It should have happened. They should have CCTV. They should have security men on ground there. Then, they left there. You saw where they went to. Somebody should be able to call the police station there. I think there's a DPO. There's a divisional police officer in every local government. And Igwebe is a local government. They should be able to call the people there that will radio. It's okay. They enter the bush through this route. So you will radio the next police station on that route. So they will lay a siege. So that should have been something that should have been brought under control in less than one hour. But it didn't happen. But we even thank God for what has happened. Unfortunately, the DSP that lost his life, you know, we cannot return that life now. It's gone. So my condolences go to the family. But the point is, if you have enough boots on ground one, and the stations are well equipped. You can respond faster. But I've also added, even the mode of recruitment of this personnel is something that's laughable. You check, the last time it was even advertised that police were going to recruit people. How did they recruit these people? What kind of interview did they conduct? I will see the era of asking politicians to bring slots. So where they will convert their talks that they use in rigging elections to and hand them over to people to train and give uniform to. So peradventure maybe the policemen are not even properly remunerated. So when you tell a policeman to go out that people are in the bush, they just kidnapped them from me, where is the zeal to go there and do that work? You know, so those are things I believe 
going forward we should look into. The people need to have a government they can call their own. That is why my prayer is that the election coming up next month and the month after, February and March, will produce the rest, the, 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 the set of people that will be chosen by the people. So if the people choose people and they know the power is in their hands to replace them when they don't do well, that can set those elected on the right course to know that, look, the people are watching. That is one. And yes, yes, that's, and that is key. Because if you know the people that have sent you here are watching and are waiting for you, if you don't do the right thing, that they will send you out and replace you. There's every tendency that you'll be a voice for the people. When you begin to become a voice for the people, and when you are in an executive position, you, you do things that will ameliorate, that will take away the thing. You campaign with, with you, you have the shoes that you, you discuss with the people, that I'm going to Abuja or I'm going to the state capital to change these things. On getting there, what did you achieve? Did you live to, up to those promises? So by the time they're able to hold their people responsible, maybe some of this criminality will come down. What I mean by that is, is because people can kidnap somebody and get away with it. Because people can burn priests alive, because this is not the first time. And most likely, unfortunately, it might not be the last time. Can do it and get away with it. That's what they will be doing it. So if you have a system where people are arrested and prosecuted and thrown into jail almost immediately, it will serve as a deterrent to others would-be criminals. But in a state where people are doing things and getting away with it, you are letting others know that they might well try their luck and they will get away with it. So as much as we advocate for more boots on ground, we also say they should be properly remunerated and then the social issues should be taken care of. Buying a bag of rice should not be something that a family will be toiling to achieve. Now, if people can go to the farm to till the land and to produce things, how would they be able to feed themselves? So these are the issues. So security is key, but I also believe if we have a proactive government, most of these issues will be taken care of. It's very simple. We have not always been like this in this country. Something happened. So we have to get to the root of what happened. And the earlier we get there, the better for everybody. Yeah, well, it shouldn't be because they also have a responsibility to the people. Like I just said, you have a train station. What stops you from having CCTV? What stops you from having two, three, four armed men? Now, how many train stations do you have? Even the entire of my senatorial, I think there are just two. There are just two train stations, you know? One in, uh, I think, around the... Um, uh, Zoo here, you know, and then the other one in the Gwebe. So, what is wrong if you post five men, you know, in each of the stations, five in one or five in or ten? Well, that would not be asking for too much, because that's the that's the government facility, and you have a whole lot of people traveling through that route. It would have served as a deterrent. It would have served as a deterrent, knowing that you have armed men there, and like I said earlier. You have a divisional police station in every local government. The place where this incident happened is a local government. So if you, if, look, I had said something about equipping them right. So if, you, if there's proper remuneration, you don't see somebody strolling out to go and buy food and leaving everybody strolling at about the same time, or somebody coming there to say, guys, come and escort me somewhere. Instead of having five men somewhere, somebody comes to take two or three away because they are expecting that that man will bring something for them to take care of themselves. If they are properly remunerated, properly trained, and properly equipped. So with an attack, why the five men are even battling those ones? They will radio the divisional uh, police office where reinforcement will come. But in the situation where you don't have enough men there, you radio the divisional police station and you have less than three men there without much equipment. No moving vehicle to get there. No radio to call the next police station to say people have entered the bush, they are coming through this route. You know, these are issues they were talking about. So as much as we are talking, advocating for more boots on ground, they should be properly equipped. People have talked about body cams, carry body cameras. So when a policeman is squeezing people, you will hear what he's talking about. It can be recorded. We are talking about the kind of arms they have. They are obsolete. We are talking about the kind of training. Even the uniforms they wear. It's no news anymore in Nigeria that policemen even buy their own uniform. 
the, the salary is no. Now we are talking about buying a bag of rice for over 40,000 naira. How much is the salary of a policeman? A sergeant? But a corporal? The challenge of funding for the government. Oh, well, the money the government gets, how have they spent it? Those are things that should be interrogated. How have they spent it? I don't want to mention names. I had a top brass in the, in the security, whatever. I said it was on social media. I bought a house for seven million dollars in the U.S. So who's looking into all that? Yes, there's not enough money. We agree, but the little that you have, spend spend it judiciously. Well, I am a member of the PDP, and um, I will vote PDP members from the Senate down to House of Assembly. But because it's my civil responsibility to vote for whoever I want to vote for, I think I am voting for a different presidential candidate because I am obedient. Well, if you want to talk about anti-party, the person you, are, you want me, you think I should vote for is the chairman of anti-party in this country. He worked out with how many governors from Eagle Square? To another party. I'm not aware he resigned. They walked out straight, formed another party within the party, and they eventually moved and took another ticket. That was even the second time he's doing it. But nothing personal. Nothing personal. Uh, he has his right to do all that. But for me, this is just where I am today in my life. Yes, I am a party person in the local, we will do the needful and vote for all that. But where I stand today, tomorrow, things might change. But as I sit down here today, that's the direction I'm going to. Well, not exactly. I just, my heart is with the obedience. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I've listened to almost everybody, you know. Let's get somebody you know who will inspire confidence in the young people so i mean let's try somebody for once that inspires you know confidence in some of us and the young people you know for once let's do that being a member of pdp doesn't make you make you a criminal you know so he's, he's, uh, he's he was in the pdp and then he aspired to be the vice presidential candidate of this country he didn't get it and then uh, he was even going to contest under the PDP. But the politics they played in PDP, it became very obvious to him that he was not going to go anywhere. And that's some of the reasons why some of us respect him. When people hijack the system with money and everything. You know? So I think he has enough money that he could have thrown the money there. But to him, why should I spend so much money for my party to just nominate me? And then he walked away from it. That is courage. And that the kind of courage that's required in Asurok Villa to say you are the head of army, you are the head of the police, I've given you task to achieve this within six months. If you don't achieve it, I sack you and put the next man there. That's the courage that's required. So he had the courage to say, look, this vehicle is not meant for me. He came down and then he, he boarded another one. And I believe this vehicle he has boarded will take him to the right destination, which is also Rock Villa. Well, I don't think anybody is saint. Yeah, well, when you are a born again Christian, you are a saint. Just because all things have passed away, all things have become new. But where we stand today in the history of this country, I need anyone to come forward and convince me as an individual that these two from the old political parties or the two big, biggest political parties in the country today are better than a much younger person. He's been tried. He, if anything, he has more experience than the two older men. You know, he's managed the state in his 40s, you know, and then he has an ongoing business. He's done well for himself. A man that left government, didn't take pension or gratuity or anything. And that's how it should be. Left money for the incoming government. That's how it should be. You shouldn't always borrow and leave huge debt for an incoming government. And from what he even says, is music to my ears. You know, that he's going to do X, Y, Z from day one. Yes, he might not achieve it from day one, but 
I think he's just a breath of fresh air. There are so many things to address. Fair subsidy is a huge scam. Yes, this government is kicking the can down the road. Because that's why they are not making the decision now. You are leaving in May and you are saying you remove subsidy from June. From June, you are not in government anymore. So you are just leaving a headache for the incoming government because you are bereft of ideas of what to do. So, but whoever is coming, this individual we are talking about now has said, look, yes, I will remove it. Although I would have preferred that he says that I will look at the dynamics around it before removing it. But if he allows that, they will compare him to continue. There are so many things that they are calculating to the subsidy that should not make it be. But again, the good news is hopefully Dangote would have come on string then. And then some of the maybe local refineries, maybe one or two, that should be enough fuel, hopefully then. You know, even at that, it's just a little money that will be saved. But we need to bite the bullet once and for all. How can you spend 3.6 or 3.5 trillion subsidizing, subsidizing just an item? And we know, because of the security failure, the, we are told the bulk of that is not even consumed in this country. It goes to the neighboring countries. And yet, we say we are a sovereign nation. So we are supposed to have security patrolling our borders. Come on. Some of those things we need to change. And even the security we're talking about today, the mean there is fairness and equity and inclusiveness, some of these tensions will come down. Yeah. The former vice president has said he will devolve power to the states. How that is going to happen, he has not given details. That will be good. But you know, in doing that, you have to tinker with the exclusive list. It will mean that when you tinker with the exclusive list, more money will have to go to the state. When people talk about state police, do you know what that means? Everybody wants state police today, but not with the revenue the states have today. Because you can owe teachers. You have states owing teachers, owing pensioners, because they are harmless, owing lecturers, university lecturers. Do you not want to own all policemen carrying AK-47? That would be disaster. So. As much as people are, states are clamoring for state police, whoever is saying he will devolve power to the states, we have to factor in the fact that you also have to allow more money go to the states so that they can manage the powers that you are giving to them. Yeah, well, yes, if, dereg if the deregulation is done, and then some money will be saved. Basically, that's the point we are making. And some of the social issues can be taken care of. Yet yeah, this government prides themselves, present government prides themselves in infrastructure. But we still have terrible roads in this country. Yes, granted, Rome was not built in a day. Things have gone so bad. But where are the roads? The kidnapping we are talking about today, the people going to Benin, we are going like, more like an Israelite journey. People, somebody traveling from Ubiaja is going through Goneki to get to Benin. When he could have just gone through his local government to Romeo and then uh, Ekmama, and uh, he will be there because of bad roads. The federal roads in my state, in Edo State, have all collapsed. And that's the truth. So if you begin to put this infrastructure in place and people can go to farm and farm, you know, you have products, farm produce in the market. Price of things will come down. When that happens, the economy will kickstart on its own. The economy will be running on its own. Even in the north, like Peter B has said, that the wealth of the nation is in the north. I just came back from Fagori, where they were recruiting, where they are recruiting army, you know, in, in Kano. As we talk now, this dry season, they are planting already. Almost everywhere there is green. So those are the ones beside the road. What about the ones further in? As they are farming in Kano, if they have the right environment to farm in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Bauchi, in Kaduna, Zaria, and all. That would be enough food. But in the situation where people cannot even go to their farms to farm or even to harvest whatever they farm, there's an issue there. So by the time we allow for peace, by the time we can take care of some of these security issues, the prices of food will come down. By so doing, inflation will come down. And some of the government policies can bring down the inflationary tendencies right now. So 
It's just the proper leadership, the right leadership in place. And most of this is, it happened before. When the military left, the passenger took over. People began, saw, saw hope in the horizon. Look, things will change. And they put it, they, we worked on that, on that, um, the person just took that political capital miles, and that helped us a great deal. This government did not, and I pray the next government will have the will to do that, or the courage, or the frame of mind to do that, and I believe things will turn around. The Petroleum Industry Act and the Electoral Act. Yes, the city, both of them, both, both of them would need to be further amended, but yeah. That's, that, for me, is uh, the high point. And I will thank God for, for the leadership of the National Assembly and uh, for the President for assenting to them.